Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hello, and welcome back to this week's episode. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen. I really appreciate it. We have a very fun episode today, and it's an expression episode, which means that in part one, you'll hear a joke, you'll learn an expression, and we'll do a pronunciation exercise. As usual, part two will be about U.S. culture. And the fun fact we're going to go over in part two is about the Statue of Liberty. It'll be another irregular verb lesson, just like the McDonald's lesson I did and the one I did about the Titanic. So it'll be fairly short. And in it, you'll hear 10 irregular past tense verbs in English. I know sometimes they're hard to remember, and so I figured let's just push them into your head. So stay tuned for that episode. It should be posted shortly. Let's begin today's episode with a joke. And I have to give some credit here. When I was walking down the street in Asheville last month, a homeless man came up to me and started telling me jokes. This was his joke. And I thought it was pretty funny. Are you ready? What do you call a belt made of watches? Any idea? A waste of time. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Such a dad joke. Um, but there's a lot of wordplay, which, as you know, I love. It's a great opportunity to learn. So, do you know what a belt is? B-E-L-T. As a noun, it's a flexible band or strap, and it's what you put through your belt loops. It's typically made of leather, fabric, or synthetic material with the primary purpose of holding up your pants. Belts are worn around the waist. W-A-I-S-T, the waist is the part of the human body between the rib cage and the hips. Now, if your belt were made of watches, you would have watches or clocks around your waist. You would literally have a waist full of time, right? It would be a waste of time. It would also be a waste of time, W-A-S-T-E, because why would you do that? Why would you have a belt made of watches? So I hope you understood that. Let's hear the joke one more time. What do you call a belt made of watches? A waste of time. Let's move on to the expression of the day. We'll start by going through the individual words first. To spread. To spread means to extend, stretch, or distribute over an area or surface. She spread butter on her toast before adding jam. Ones is a placeholder here. It indicates possession or belonging. Wings are the part of the body on birds or on insects that they flap. They move up and down in order to fly. The bird flapped its wings and flew away. Now, to spread one's wings is an English idiom. It's an expression. And while there's no written record of when it was first used, we can deduce that it comes from observing birds, a bird that's ready to take flight and explore new horizons spreads its wings. As a metaphor, it has been used for centuries. 
to describe humans embarking on new adventures, exploring opportunities, or gaining independence. It evokes the sense of leaving a place of comfort or confinement and venturing into the unknown. So you can kind of imagine a bird in its cage not being able to fly, and then once its little door is open, it can spread its wings and it's out in the open and it's free. Let's go through some examples. So imagine there's a girl named Sarah. She's 17 years old and she has never left her small hometown. Now imagine she gets accepted to a university all the way across country. Maybe she's from California and she gets accepted to Harvard, which is in Massachusetts. So she might see that as an opportunity to spread her wings, to have new experiences, to embrace change, to make lifelong friends, and maybe discover her passion. All right? College is a time when many people in the United States, many 18-year-olds, some 17-year-olds, spread their wings. They move away from home and experience the world for the first time as independents. Let's do another example. So imagine a man named Mark. Mark has been working in a corporate job for years, and he feels very unfulfilled and confined. He one day decides that he's going to spread his wings and open his own tech company. The journey is challenging and crazy because it involves a lot of risks, but at the same time, he's willing to embark on that venture. And his innovative ideas and hard work lead to a successful business. Mark, in this circumstance, spread his wings by starting his own tech company. He was courageous and he pursued something that was out of his comfort zone. Think of a comfort zone like a cage, in a way. A bird is in a cage. It can't really spread its wings. The moment you open the door, though, it's free. It's experiencing something new. Example number three. When I was in high school, I had a fantastic history teacher. He was very strict, and a lot of people didn't actually like him. I loved him. Occasionally, he told stories about the world and his travels, and I knew that I wanted to go abroad. When I was 16, I decided to spread my wings and travel to different countries. I went on a high school trip with all of my friends to Europe, and we visited seven different countries. Honestly, it changed my life and it's what made me interested in other cultures. Once again, to spread one's wings means to step out of one's comfort zone and venture into the unknown, doing something new and different and embracing change. Personally, I've always admired people who embrace change and take risks, whether those risks be related to one's career or hobbies, or free time activities. Usually when we spread our wings, we develop our character. Birds have long been symbols of freedom in various cultures. So I don't think this concept is foreign. The act of spreading one's wings is a very powerful visual. It's the initial stage of flight. If you tell someone I think it's time to spread your wings or go spread your wings. You're encouraging them to take risks, step out of that comfort zone, maybe pursue their dreams, kind of like a bird taking flight into the open sky. Let's do a pronunciation exercise. We'll use the statement, it's time to spread your wings. Repeat after me, it's time. It's time to. It's time to spread your wings.
It's time to spread your wings. In the conjugation, repeat after me. I spread my wings. You spread your wings. She spread her wings. He spread his wings. It spread its wings. We spread our wings. They spread their wings. Notice here that I was actually using the past tense. Spread is an irregular past tense verb. In the past, it's just spread. <laughs> All right? And you know I was using the past, of course, because the third person singular, she, he, it, I didn't say she spreads her wings. I would say that if maybe she did it every day. She spreads her wings every day when she wakes up. Or he spreads his wings, or it spreads its wings. In the past, it's of course, she spread her wings, he spread his wings, and it spread its wings. Just figured I would mention that because we will be talking about irregular verbs in the next episode. Once again, we're going to be talking about the Statue of Liberty, I'm hoping to get it out before Independence Day, which is July 4th. Hope you have a nice day. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.